Hi, Mickey. Hey, Bob. You're looking good. You, you got mean, a tuxedo on, sunglasses. You probably think I even have a cummerbund. You probably think. <laughs> you uh, wish. Go ahead. No, uh, I do. Um, you do? Uh, let's, you, this is, let's keep this on the up and up. You know, exactly. don't show them. No. Cover no, bond. don't show them your cummerbund. No. <laughs> God, that was a close it call. Got, people have gotten into trouble for that. Um, so you probably think I'm all dressed up to celebrate our gala New Year end of year uh, two week uh, episode. I but, did until you put the until you framed it like that, but, and I'm growing skeptical now. But I you'd think be maybe wrong. there's something else going on. You know, because I I saw the recent James Bond movie. Have you seen it? I haven't, but I would just love to. You you know the um the the role of James Bond is now open. Daniel Craig. This is his last James Bond. And, oh, uh, and Mickey and, sees know, a career opportunity. I live in Hollywood, and also yeah, um, save there, on commuting costs. Absolutely, there, there, there's That'll a appeal um, to the studio. There's a topical tie-in, Bob. Yeah. And, uh, well, the, the movie features. Uh, I'm not giving anything away by saying the villain played by Rami Malek is a guy who has weaponized a virus uh, mm. to basically wipe out all of his enemies, which is sort of much of humanity. And of course, he has an that, island. I know that. I know that feeling. Believe me. He has, he has an island, and and you know, and they go to the island, and there's a big confrontation, and all the James Bond things are there. But uh, this put, I, I thought of this when I was reading about the current uh, status of the virus and the Omicron uh, variant, and basically, mm -hmm. the uh, we had the Delta variant, which. Uh, was very deadly, relatively speaking, to the unvax, but didn't really do much to harm the vax. But it wasn't, it wasn't that deadly. And then we have the Omicron virus, which penetrates the vax, so it infects the vax, but it doesn't kill them, okay? So we don't quite know what it does to the unvax. Um, so if you were Rami Malek, you would say, wait a minute, the Omicron has these... these uh, mutations on the spike, but it doesn't have the other mutations that make Delta so dangerous. Why not combine the mutations on the spike with the Delta mutations? Then you have something that pierces pierces the uh, vaccine and is deadly. You could have Rami Malek's super weapon and really wreak havoc on humanity. That doesn't seem so hard to do. So it seems to me there's a huge James, James Bond danger in somebody combining these two variants and producing a, a, a super weapon and, and an epic plague on humanity. Why am I wrong? Today's speculations uh, in futuristic scare scenarios by Mickey, who has no grounding whatsoever in molecular biology. I don't know. Maybe it's, I, I mean, look, I've been, it's a, a hobby horse of mine to point out that there is equipment in university laboratories all over the world and commercial laboratories in various places that could produce scary stuff at the hands of reasonably well-trained people if they had enough malice and we need to do something about that. I, I think that ge that's generically true. I have no idea whether these two variants give somebody a big head start. Uh, I mean, you know, neither of them. Well, anyway, that's my answer. Neither of them is all that deadly. Exactly. I was going to say that. And then I, yeah. then I thought, may, although maybe they are capable of kind of paralyzing a country. I, I, I mean, a deadlier, uh, uh, somewhat deadlier, uh, somewhat more transmissible virus could certainly paralyze a given well, and, and country. Somebody... But you'd have to be this lone crazy guy. It's not like a rational strategy for a country to launch into the world a virus that's inevitably going to cross its own borders. Um, I guess that's right. It's, it's, um, a virus that penetrated the vaccine and rendered the whole vaccine rollout obsolete by killing a lot of people who had the vaccine would be incredibly demoralizing to the world. I mean, if you were, even if it didn't kill a lot of people, it would depress a lot of people. But it no. would. Well, people uh, seem pretty depressed as it is. Uh, uh, the um, I want to quickly say something about just i know mainly folks we're this is our gala new year's eve edition we're going to do all kinds of 
uh, New Year's Eve stuff, uh, give awards for the year and uh, make predictions and things like that. But I, I thought the coverage of the qu- the question in the, in elite newspapers of the question of how uh, dangerous Omicron is has been really terrible. I, I, I mean, when the first round of studies came out about a week ago, all of them said, uh, you know, studies show it's 60, 70 percent uh, less likely to cause severe illness. And that was really pretty misleading. What they meant was if you compare the population that just got Delta with a population that just got Omicron and see what happens to them, uh, the, the people in Omicron are 70 percent less likely to get seriously ill. Right. But remember, because it's hard for vaccinated people or people with natural immunity to get Delta, the Omicron population has a much larger fraction that is vaccinated. The, the, the number we want is the apples to apples number. What if you compare unvaccinated in one population to right. unvaccinated in another, or vaccinated? And all of these stories, the weird thing is they had the number. There were at least some studies that got into that. And the number seemed to be for unvaccinated, it's only it's about 20 percent, 10, 20, maybe 30 percent right. less uh, less severe, which is great news. But it's a very different story. All of them had the number. It's like in paragraph number 10. And the way they wrote the stories leaves the impression that I, I Bob, face a, 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 a I am 70 percent less likely to get severely ill from Omicron than from Delta, which is not the case. Not um, the case. Well, you, Bob, are vaccinated, so you are less likely to get severely ill. Not by 70 percent. That's not what that that's not what the number means either. I don't think I mean, it means more than 20 percent. 20 percent is how how it it confers. It's a little less dangerous for the unvaxxed. I think that I have a list here of things we know and things we don't know about Omicron. Yeah, well, good. And and one of them is one of them is uh, uh, how lethal is it to the unvaxxed? Is it less lethal? And the answer seems to be it's a little less lethal, not a lot less lethal. Twenty percent is a good number. Exactly, but it's not seventy. Uh, and does it confer uh, immunity uh, to Delta if you get Omicron? Are you then? Uh, are you? Are, you know, if you're unvaxxed, you get Omicron, you survive, uh, as most people do. Uh, are you then? Do you then have immunity from Delta, which would be a good thing? Uh, and the answer is you get a little. Uh, it does a, help against Delta, which, sa- which is good. There's a South African study, unfortunately, it only has 13 participants uh, that mm. said it was it increased the uh, the antibody response by 4.4 times or something like that, compared with like 17 versus Omicron. So it's a lot less gives you a lot less immunity to Delta than it does to Omicron, but it does give you some. So. So what we don't wait, know. This is wait. I'm sorry, I missed that. What is it that confers the immunity? Is it is it Om- getting uh, Omicron getting confers sick? Omicron okay. confers a little bit of immunity okay. against Delta okay. too. Uh, right. What we don't know is mainly does it outcompete Delta in the overall mark you know, overall market for viruses? In other words, it's going to push Delta out. It could be that it just infects the vac- vaccinated and doesn't kill them, and it doesn't infect the unvaccinated. Delta still reigns supreme there. So it's almost irrelevant. It sort of washes through the vaccine population and disappears. But Delta remains the threat. Uh, there, there was a story in The New York Times that seemed to say, no, it does sort of outcompete Delta. Some, some physicians in Britain saying, well, when we see when Omicron advised that Delta penetration declined. OK, so that's good. Uh, in general, we don't know what's happening to Delta. If De- when Omicron leaves, as it might, it seems to go up and down very quickly. It, are we going to be left with in the same Delta mess we were before? And uh, also, we don't quite know if it's more transmissible, I don't think. Uh, um, so. Well, uh, don't we know that for sure, just based on the sheer rate of transmission? I mean, it's incredible. But that's because it's, it's, it's racing through the vaccinated population. I think we don't. I think we don't. I thought I thought you were a skeptic. Of yeah, the but if you compare bill. if you compare the the uh, steepness of the curve, the ascending number of cases back to times like like uh, the big Delta wave was before virtually anybody was vaccinated, and it, it is spreading. It, it seems to, to to compare the steepness of the curves, you would think 
Omicron is clearly more transmissible even in a heavily vaccinated population than Delta was in a mainly unvaccinated population. I think it's more transmissible only in the heavily vaccinated population. It, maybe you think I'm, it's I, not I, very I, transmissible I, in the unvaccinated? I, um, I, there, there's a, there's a, the best article I've read is Benjamin Wallace Wells, Wells Wallace in New York Magazine. Wallace Wells. Wallace Wells. He interviews a, a some sort of international uh, epidemiologist who says she's not convinced that it's more transmissible. So I assume she was making that sort of argument that it really is a, a somehow it's an artifact of uh, it only affecting the unvaxxed. Um, it, the vax. Of it only, only affecting uh, the vax. Sorry. Well, even if so, it's more transmissible. I, I, it looks to me as more transmissible among va- uh, vaxxed at a minimum than than the Delta was among the unvaxxed. OK, well, I don't, I don't know what her uh, the, I mean, experts reason for doubting it. Were, were, in any but, event, this leads to my. My one prediction. It's three predictions. You want to hear my three predictions for the uh, year? Are we going to have predictions later in the gala awards segment? OK, we can. Well, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead now. It's relevant now. Well, this just happens to be COVID. Yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, so I think by early February, a mere like five weeks from now, I think it's moving so fast. We'll be like, oh, the worst uh, is behind us. Omicron, man, that was it ain't great. The hospitals are clogged and so on. But the worst is behind us. I think by early March. This is. A guess, but I think we may be starting to think, um, wow, this is going to leave us in better shape than ever. Uh, you know, partly because Omicron does seem to confer some immunity against Delta. That, that I mean, who knows what the next variant will be, but it's better to, to hear that Omicron confers a kind of a broad spectrum immunity in at least one direction than, than that it doesn't. Um, but then the other thing I was thinking was that by April, this is, I, I'm predicting conventional wisdom by April, is going to be like China is screwed because they have opted for this zero tolerance for the virus uh, policy. And, and so, you know, the variant, there will be the possibility of variants still out there. Some will emerge and they just have to shut down completely at every scare. They just shut down Xi'an, uh, which has about 10 million people, hard lockdown last week. Um, and I, I think in, in retrospect, in, unless this, this virus is rid from the planet and it's starting to look like it won't be, uh, that it may become something more like the flu, um, th- uh, they're just going to face this problem for a long time, I think. Are they going to be a reservoir of new variants that are going to come in and infect us? No, quite the opposite. <laughs> There's no, the, the virus is, is only minimally replicating in China. That's the point. I mean, every time it starts to rear its head, they shut down whatever they have oh, to so shut you down. Think, you think their future is they're never they never abandon zero COVID and they just keep shutting down. I don't. Well, yeah. Whereas see that. we are acquiring various forms of immunity uh, of some at least some efficacy. I mean, you can imagine a future wave that is like, okay, it's tough, but we can take it without major lockdown. You know, it's about as transmissible as Delta and slightly less lethal. Uh, and if you're vaxxed, it's blah, 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 blah. And, and we just kind of say, keep the businesses open. We can survive that, this. And China with no immunity from, uh, you know. Now, I, I, I guess it depends. I mean, they do have, they have a lot of vaccinated people, but their vaccine is not all that effective. Right. Uh, they, um, they, th- th- that assumes it's not the incredibly deadly Rami Malek James Bond variant. Yeah, well, now we're back in in Mickey yeah. territory. Uh, but why why shouldn't why shouldn't it evolve into a dangerous variant and a really dangerous variant with more than a you know one percent uh, death rate? I well, mean, what, it could, what, but there's there no some particular principle, is there some principle that says it can't do that. No, it, it de- that depends partly on the avenues of transmission. For example, AIDS. That seems to have evolved toward high lethality in promiscuous environments where transmission was very easy, okay? Right. Because it could hop to pe- person to person very readily, uh, it could afford to kill people and right. still and still do very well. But, but a question remains, 
is there any value in killing people? With some viruses, that is an avenue of transmission. They kill the animal, somebody eats the animal, gets the virus, right? right but right. with these viruses, that's not happening. And you can imagine a scenario where uh, the severity of illness is a disadvantage to the virus. If, 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 it, if it like immediately gets people so ill, they lock themselves in a bedroom and don't see anybody, that's bad for the virus. Right. And, and, right. and that could, in principle, steer the virus toward less severity, that consideration. Unless they, unless they kill so many people that the bodies themselves give off the virus. Well, as I said, if death is yeah. an avenue of transmission, yeah. right, right. But you know that's not the way this virus seems to be working. It seems to require that you breathe in order to pass it on. Wasn't that's that a good problem? news for us. Wasn't that a problem with the bubonic plague, though? Sanitary conditions of in terms of disposing of bodies. Maybe I'm wrong. I I'm don't getting know, morbid that, here. Sorry. That was a similar, you know, um, I don't know. That was, that, that was like a product of globalization 1.0. That actually originated in Asia, spread uh, through merchant uh, avenues to Europe. And it was because there was some degree of urbanization that it thrived there. Um, the other thing that, that happened is this whole testing kerfuffle. And I'm, I, I, I found myself in rare agreement with your God, Ezra Klein, who, who said uh, he didn't under, you know, everybody's ragging on Biden for not developing the, this testing capacity fast enough. And mm -hmm. it doesn't seem to me that developing the test, testing capacity now is all that important. I mean, what, how, how, it's not going it, to, it would enable people to go home for the holidays and people want the test, but it's not going nice. to stop the virus. Originally, it was supposed to be test, trace, and isolate. It was an old systematic thing that was going to shut down the virus, and we're not doing that. So, so well, having some a, people are. Some people. Having, I okay. mean, some people are taking. A lot of people are taking it upon themselves to do it. My right. daughters and their friends do this. Right. Okay. So you test positive, you isolate. Some people do that. Right. But um, uh, but it it it, it, it I don't think it has a big impact on the spread of the virus. Uh, so I, I think Biden's getting sort of unfair grief because he prioritized the vaccine over the test. Now, the test will be very important when this Pfizer drug comes online that has to be given right away, because you want, you want to know right away that you have it, and, and that you can take the Pfizer drug quickly. That's uh, true. But um, it, it, that, that hasn't happened yet. That's, uh, I don't know how long away it is, but it's, it's not a long time away, but it's, it's weeks away. But I mean, it, it is... Giving people peace of mind is important and making it easier for them to, uh, without guilt or anxiety, you know, gather with their relatives at holidays. All that stuff is important. That is part of Biden's Okay. Style. Okay. Well. And it's good politics, too. I mean, he screwed up. Uh, okay. You know, it, 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 you shouldn't leave to the market. I mean, I mean, if this whole thing has taught us nothing else, it has taught us that... Uh, you can't rely on on the marketplace to insure you against you know sudden unanticipated disruptions. The supply chain right. was not built for that. It was built for just in time inventory, well, and recently. and uh, it's the same more broadly. There are things that the government has to do, and uh, more than one of them, I think uh, neither Biden or Trump did. Well, one thing that he's clearly going to do. This would be a mini prediction. This he is going to. He may be doing it even as we speak is order up more of this Pfizer uh, treatment, uh, th this pill that has like tr dramatic effectiveness, like 80% or something. Yep. Uh, and and there's not going to be enough of them, but he can order, use the Defense Production Act to order up more. Uh, and why would he not do that? It's the obvious thing to do. Look, this gets to my whole hobby horse. He has had the opportunity and blown it to become the global leader against the pandemic. And he, this, I would, the approach I would take to this is the one I would take to vaccines. Push through a change, you know, an emergency change in intellectual property protection. I mean, I've said this before, get, get, you know, we, there's all this talk about vaccine donations. Well, the trouble with donations is it's a zero sum game. And, you know, yeah, we can send some over there. I'm in favor of that. But it doesn't expand the total supply of vaccines. That's what he needs to do. And if he's going to do that, he needs to fiddle with the intellectual property protections. 
Compel well, companies you, to respect you that. Know, and, and wait, I want to finish because people always stop you right here and go, oh, you're so naive. I know it takes more than that. He has to compel Pfizer, Moderna, and so on to transfer their manufacturing know-how to other manufacturers all over the world and ramp up big time. And and he, he could do the same thing with this medicine. But remember, this medicine is not just a, a pal- It doesn't just uh, cure people. It also reduces the chances of um, of a new variant because it reduces the number of times the virus is replicating in each person. This is the treatment or the vaccine. The treatment. The treatment. Both Don't, of them have but, the result of reducing uh, the chances have of a to, new variant. He doesn't have to do something fancy like suspend intellectual property to invoke the Defense Production Act. So why doesn't he do that first? Get all the factories in America up and running, producing this stuff, and uh, and then we can worry about intellectual property. Uh, well, he, I mean, he, I suppose do, do, do the first step first. I mean, I suppose he can do that. I mean, I don't know how that worked in World War II. Uh, do, is does that just mean okay, Pfizer? It's, here's another factory you can use, or what? Yeah, uh, I, it, I think it, I think it impresses factories into. Uh, I into say, service. do not depend on any one company, including Pfizer. I say, get the know-how in the hands of a number of actors, all of whom stand to profit, and then through subsidy. And as I've said before, literally one fucking billionaire, Elon Musk, could could pay for the whole fucking planet, uh, and, and, and 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 to make sure that in poorer countries this stuff is affordable. I thought that would drive you crazy that the cost of vaccinating the world was seven billion dollars when we're debating a three trillion dollar build back better bill, it seems to me we could afford $7 billion. I would say spend more than that to ensure that Pfizer and Moderna are incentivized to keep innovating. You want them to make some kind of Yeah, profit. you want to, you, you want to compensate them, but I, I, I don't, anyway, I don't, I don't see where you need a fancy intellectual property thing. Pay, pay the money, invoke the Defense Production Act, produce as much of this stuff as we can. And then if that's not enough, then we can worry about intellectual property and having other countries produce it. No, I, I disagree. You can't rely on any one company's ability to ramp up. The way to ramp up is give a number of accomplished companies in a number of places a financial incentive to ramp up as fast as they, they can. Some will have better ideas than others. That's the way the market works. Um, Let a thousand flowers bloom, as okay, they say. Well, in, the uh, people I've seen who, berating Biden for not producing enough of the treatment have been talking about the defense production act. I, I, um, you've, you've leapfrogged them into into fresh territory, but uh, I, you know I'm I'm fine with that, of course. But but I think you have to ultimately, especially with the vaccine, you're going to have to address IP. I think, and and you and you want to get this into more hands than one company, the manufacturing. Uh-huh. Um. Anyway, that's my sermon, and and it's just such a colossal. I mean, look. Even if he wasn't going to do shit, but was just going to pose as the global pandemic leader, you know, like most presidents would at least have the sense to do that. You know, instead, he has a fucking summit of democracies. Oh, that was helpful. He instead didn't of pose having, as... uh, at least have a fake summit about <laughs> you know, about the pandemic. He didn't. Uh, I was stunned by the, you know, he he obviously had some sort of sunny idea that the vax was going to cure the problem for him. He didn't have to worry about it. And then this new variant came along and he claims to have been surprised and Kamala Harris claims to have been surprised. I was stunned buried in the Washington Post story on how he shouldn't have been surprised was they did a survey of two thirds of epidemiologists and two thirds said there was going to be a new troublesome variant. Uh, So it's not like the experts weren't telling him if he asked that he should worry about new variants, right? Yeah, look, uh, I, I, you know, the problem is, I think, I don't know. I uh, will get into this. I, I will eventually get to the question of Biden himself as we proceed with our you, New Year's game. You, um, what about this idea that there, that shots eventually do more harm than good? That this was raised by Drudge, and it, it, re- it referenced an article about some Israeli scientists were thinking that maybe there shouldn't be a fourth booster, that that it was sort of somehow wearing out the body's ability to produce antibodies or something. I, I, I have, no, I have idea. no expertise in that at all. I would say, I think we should put more faith in our T cells. I mean, these vaccines, although 
It's true that after a while, their effect on antibody production wanes, as I understand it. All of them have enduringly good effects on the, on the memory cells, the T cells, that ultimately are, are keep, can keep the disease from getting severe, right. even if they don't fend off infection. Although, although the, the, the Omicron has de- dealt a blow to the natural immunity people, since it seems the natural immunity does not offer much protection against Omicron either. Well, you can uh-huh. always imagine a sufficiently different variant that you were screwed on all grounds, vaccines, yeah. natural immunity, et cetera. And this was a case of a whole lot of mutations somehow accumulating, and they're still trying to figure out how. Some people think so, it was in yeah. an immune compromised person. Um, yeah. So you um, want to talk about Biden? Because the alternative is talking about, you know what? Uh, what? Build back better? Yes. Now, what it? Well, th- aren't those one and the same? By the way, I no, want to you know I'm wearing a tie. You can't see because the microphone. I'm wearing a tie, uh, and I would, I would. Last year, I wore a tuxedo, and I'm sure that I inspired you to do that. It wasn't actually James Bond. Last New Year's, I wore a tuxedo. I would put on this suit coat, but watch what happens to my face when I do, because I guess because this camera is set with uh, automatic exposure. Whoops! Your, your face turns white. Yeah. See, that's not good. So I got to take this off. So that the there's it's a, a lot racist of white shirt suit. showing. Um, um so so, so uh, wait, well when are we gonna get into the New Year Gala thing? That's gonna take time. Okay, well let's talk quickly about Biden I, and then get into the New Year Gala. Give me the, thirty seconds on Build Back Better and I will No, uh, I, I'm, I'm go avoiding Build Back Better. I just uh, want to talk about okay. Biden. We have, we we have no well, la- the- well that is a year end question right can't that be part of our our annual retrospective? It could, but I have a little point to make, and if you let me make okay, my little point, okay. it would have been made by now. Okay, well, that is little. That is little. Uh, Go um, ahead. We don't know what's going on in the Biden White House. We don't know how John Fund had an article pointing this out, and he was right. Uh, and it's, it's becoming obvious. We don't know why he makes the decisions he made. Why, you know, I was reading back through my my predictions for this year and I thought, well, it's obvious Biden isn't going to go way left and think he's FDR and, you know, pr- produce a big, huge New Deal like list of legislation, which is exactly what he did. How did he reach that decision? Who influenced him? What do these five mysterious people who supposedly run the White House do all day? Is it the White House is hermetically sealed against leaks. We have no idea what do Bruce Reed and Donilon and Ron Klain do? Is Jill in charge? Is Klain in charge? Who's on the left? Who's on the right? Uh, it's And it's hurting them because because he's obviously doing disastrously in the polls and he's not doing that badly as president. He would be much better served if it was a, if it was a little more transparent and people knew what the debates were in the White House and who was up and who was down. Just a little. It doesn't have to be Trump-like. But Wait, why uh, would it help for us to know that? Well, I because I, you'd have some confidence that Somebody who wasn't obviously fading in his mental acuity was in charge, for one, and the other use it for trial balloons. I mean, people people leak things. I mean, one of the, the one of the main reasons White Houses leak is because you know Biden comes up with this crazy idea that hey, the way we're going to sell Build Back Better is it's the way to fight inflation, and you're like, right. you, so you know, so you leak that, and then everybody goes, oh, that's a terrible idea. It's obviously not the way to fight inflation. Don't do that, and then he doesn't do it. But he did it because there's no way to try out the trial balloon. That would be the argument. Okay. I, also, I will re- revisit this under one of our gala New Year's categories, but go ahead. Okay. So I, I, that's, 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 I've said my piece. I think, I think they should start talking to reporters, which they don't do. I'm not convinced of that that's the biggest problem. <laughs> but uh, It's not the biggest problem. I just sort of, I was sort of want to know too, but... Um, that's related uh, to what I'm going to say in one of our gala categories. Okay, well, um, I'm ready for our gala categories. Okay, now you you did the service of uh, providing most of them, suggesting most of them. Maybe you have the master list. I know one of them was Hero of the Year. That I would be a upbeat way I, to start. I have, I have a list. Hero of the Year is one of them, yeah. Did you have a Hero of the Year, and am I it? I have, I have several nominees, and I have one that I've settled on, yeah. Well, first of all, before you tell me whether I actually won, I just want to say that it, the nomination itself is enough of an honor. Um, okay, because uh, that, yeah. I mean, that's almost more important than winning. Um, I agree. So thank um, you. You're welcome. Uh, the, uh, the, the nominees are, um, 
our former production manager who steered us through uh, at least a year without Colleen, without any disasters. Um, I think she gets it before you. Colleen gets an award. Uh, yeah. She gets um, a Lifetime Achievement Award. Okay. Um, the heroes of the year are uh, yeah. uh, the guy who runs the Women's Tennis Association who stood up to China, unlike the NBA guy. Matt Lewis wrote a Heroes of the Year column, and he was he was on the list. That's a he, good. That's a good candidate. He, uh, uh, Mike Pence, who at at the crucial hour stood yep, up to Trump. Yep, that's good. Dan Quayle, who at the crucial hour advised Mike Pence to stand up to Trump. Uh, uh, of course, uh, Barry Weiss. You know, just just for, oh well, naturally as, for, for what know, remind a, me for she founded, of the year. Whole, she founded a whole university that. For a while, we thought it might actually come into being. Has is it dead? I don't think it's dead. <laughs> I don't know. But wait, uh, what? Her website. Her I went. I visited her website after hyping her website. It's still uh -huh. great, but it needs more content. She needs to hire some more writers, or get some. You know, get one of her rich friends to give a bunch of money to hire writers, and then she can hire people to. to she just needs more articles. It, it's just. Not can you tell there. her that I'm available if she needs content? In fact, you know the piece I wrote about her for the for the you non zero that, newsletter that, that people can the one that people can Google, like her name, my name, non zero. She can speaking of intellectual property, I surrender that to her, okay? Non exclusive rights on that story. Okay. Um well, uh you know, she's a nominee for Hero of the Year. The other um But wait, well I'm as that passed so quickly. Why? Oh, because she started a good website that it, it strikes exactly. The, I'm no, joking because no. it annoys you, Bob. Yeah, exactly. But, I was going to say, <laughs> um, it, it, she, she gets the award for being a good way to troll Bob. And I, yeah. I concur that she's a good way um, to do that. Okay. And and she had a better year than Jeff Goldberg, who was the other person who trolls Bob. So, um, the, uh, she? That's good. Uh, the uh, John. You, you know what Babe Ruth said when they asked him if it made sense that he made more money than the president? I had a better year than he did. Yes. Which is another point about Biden, by the way. Every everybody says that Biden uh you know didn't solve the virus and that's why he's unpopular. Well, FDR didn't solve the depression and he was popular because he at least seemed to be exercising leadership and have his heart in the right place and he was gonna try A and try B and try C. That's and what I said. Work. At least have a fake summit. Right. That's what I mean. Right. No, but th that's the point. People people say, well, um, just because Omicron came along, he was flummoxed and he'd never be popular. No, if you if you if you seem to be leading, people are not going to hold, you know, temporary setbacks and failures against you. Yeah. Um, the uh, anyway, the the other one is uh, nominated by my friend John Ellis is the the man who figured out how proteins fold. Apparently, this is a very important scientific discovery. And they employed deep mind artificial intelligence to figure out how proteins fold. And all sorts of good things are going to come from that, folding these proteins. So uh, good. he's a potential nominee. But my 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 winner is Joe Manchin. Stop the chop. <laughs> Troll he, Bob part two. No, but Man, a, a Manchin, Manchin stopped the child tax credit expansion, at least temporarily. If it is enacted, it's quite likely to have a work requirement. And then I'm fine with it. Uh, so we're not, we're not going to have a culture of dependence that's going to suck a couple million more Americans into a life of non-work and drug addiction. Uh, so, uh, uh, and, and, and plus the proposal he made as Democrats who had a brain immediately realized was a good proposal that Biden should have taken immediately. Uh, uh, you want to know what's in his mansion's proposal, Bob? Not really, no. You'll like it. It, it involves uh, a bunch of save Obamacare money. So I guess that question you asked enough. me was kind of a rhetorical question. <laughs> like my answer didn't actually matter, right? Like, do you want to hear this, Bob? That didn't literally that was, mean, do you want to hear this, Bob? Like if you don't. Well, I did want to you. know if you wanted to hear it. That didn't mean I wasn't going to tell you anyway. Okay. okay. But um, the it, it, and it involved uh, universal pre-K, which you like which hmm. Manchin likes. It's not really a requirement because states can just not participate as people on the left have pointed out, but it's better than nothing. And, the, and, and a, you know, about half a trillion dollars of green money, uh, the details of which 
We don't know. But for Manchin to propose half a billion dollars, half a trillion dollars in green incentives coming from a coal state is reasonably good. Yeah. And, and those are three good things. So just do the three good things and then do the other ones later. It's, it's probably like subsidies to coal miners who want to put solar panels on their on their roofs or something. But now, Bob, uh, you're being cynical. Uh, no, I shouldn't be. Um, it would have to get through the Democratic Congress. It's not. Let me tell you what the Democrats bullshit. should be should do with Manchin is like if they had the courage, which of course they don't. But uh, is like, oh, okay, your big concern is inflation, and you're saying this thing because it it doesn't pay for itself early on, especially it, there's steep deficit spending in the beginning. Okay, we'll do a hefty surtax on rich people for two years. That will mean it well more than pays for itself in the short term. So there won't be any inflationary effect. How do you like that? And he, he wouldn't be in favor of that either because it's not about the inflation. That's not true. He's, uh, he's in favor of taxing the rich. It's cinema. Is he? Against, yeah, it's cinema who's against taxing the rich. He wants to roll back the t- Trump tax cuts. On what, the rich. what tax for the rich? Yeah, I just said well, he, wants I would go beyond that. Trump, he wants to roll back the Trump tax cuts for the rich. That's what I'm saying. He's, well, he's not something. averse to taxing the rich. He's from West Virginia. It's cinema who's the obstacle there. Uh, yeah, you but obvi- I figured... You, you obviously have a cliched view of Manchin. I wasn't aware of him vigorously proposing uh, or, 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 or proposing at all any, any tax hikes. Well, then why don't they do... Well, so then there is a tax... Because then they don't problem. have cinema. Right. <laughs> That's wrong. Um, the... Uh, but so at anyway, least, uh, okay, he, but wait, but wait, but, 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 but wait, 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 wait. My, my master plan is unfolding. Give me a second. So say to Joe Biden, okay, how about we add these taxes? Maybe go beyond rolling, you know, rolling back the Trump tax cuts, whatever it takes. Steep, like for two, and some of it, you roll back those. But the, in addition, there's a there's like a surtax for two years on people who make over 300k or something, and. uh and he's got to first say yes or no. And if he says yes, you go to cinema and go, do you want to be the reason none of this shit happens? That's my master I, plan. I think she might say yes. But A, Biden, you, you went down to 300K. Ex- Biden has promised no taxes under 400K. Well, then make it 400. You, like me, like me, you have no idea how much money these damn people make. Uh, I remember I, I, I thought... Lawrence O'Donnell was insane when he said it's ridiculous that people who make only 300K are, are taxed at the same as people who make a million a year. And I thought, who makes 300K? Well, 1% of the population makes 300K. No. So is that true? Yeah. Household More, income? Yeah. yeah. So it's, oh my um, God. Uh, it's, it, you know, I, I've never made 100K in my life. So 300K seems. Well, we deserve a raise. This is ridiculous. We should, um, so we should so, mention then patriot.com slash parrot room where uh, all Americans of all backgrounds yeah. and religious faiths can come together and give us a raise. And uh, plus I, get I'm access to the parrot room I hate to tell you. after this every week. Uh, but, and that's okay. Should we, can we do gala now? Well, we're doing gala. I just gave you my oh, hero of the year. It, it happened to annoy you, oh, right. but you know. Nobody well, says you can't be annoyed at a gala. I mean, you you haven't departed from trolling mode yet. I now my here I had trouble with hero because it's like I guess my de- my definition of a hero is someone who defies the incentives that human beings normally comply with. You know, like really is willing to undergo a total loss of status or wealth, so on for a cause. Right. And in a way, the closest I could come is Bernie Sanders. Maybe that's a mistake, but it seems to me that like there were a lot of incentives during the presidential campaign, especially as he it was starting to look like he would actually get the nomination for him to start moving a little to the center. And that may well have saved his campaign if he had done it wisely. I don't know. But I finally realized it's just he's just not the type. He's just going down with the ship. I mean, uh, and I respect that. Uh, now it may be, I'm wrong about this. And he was actually coldly calculating and said, trust me, you know, if I moderate, I'll lose too much, uh, enthusiasm from my base and so on. But he does seem to me like a person genuinely committed to a cause. And that's not that easy to find in politics. I just think he's overcommitted to some causes that aren't worth, uh, that level of commitment like this one. 
Like Medicare for like, like dental, dental coverage in Medicare. Medicare. That's a great cause. You want you want to see my teeth? It's not as important as it's not Look as important. Look at these teeth. As, I could be I could be British for all you know with these teeth. Um, it's it's not as important as other things like uh, establishing Medicare for all in the first place, for example. Um, so uh, and it's not as important as shoring up Obamacare. So it's it's it you know he's he's you you can argue that it's a reasonably good good position for him to to like insist on all these things and not get them and in the end he'll settle for what he gets but uh i would that doesn't make him a hero okay uh, then i'm coming up empty handed you can't nominate yourself right in this in these things go ahead that'll get attention nah, that'll go nah, viral nah i'm too modest nah <laughs> uh, uh villain of the year i think we may have the same villain of the year uh I don't know. Let's you go first. I'd be a little surprised, but it's not impossible. Let's just say I'm not wearing enough layers to be the villain of the year. Oh no, we don't have the same person. Okay, I was going to nominate Steve Bannon. Oh, who might be the okay? Okay, yeah, who might be the hero of the year in some other year, but this year he was a villain. No, he's total villain. That that is literally who I had written down, and I think history will judge. That to the extent that there was any single mastermind behind what happened on January 6th, it was him. And he, you know, when we started doing the weekly thing again in, I guess, spring of 2020, pretty early on, I started listening to his podcast featuring little snippets on our podcast. At first, it was a source of amusement. But as the election approached, I mean, I increasingly saw how important he genuinely was. And as the election approached, he was mapping out the strategy. He was saying... Well, before the election, we're not going to count the mail-in ballots, you know, and he just was a catalyst and a clearinghouse and uh, the central node in a network. And right before January 6th, I remember he was repeating, he would repeat these cryptic phrases. Like I remember going up to January 6th, his favorite phrase, he would just say this again and again. Remember, you call the play, you run the play. If I had a dollar for every time he said that in the two weeks before January well, how, 6th, what's so terrible about that? N- nothing, but I, I we, think what I mean now, is we now know what he meant by the play. He meant the Green Bay Packers sweep, which was sort of a, a, a triple bank shop that would delay the vote and give the administration time to have hearings and turn public opinion in his favor. Did not involve violence. So if the play well, did not involve violence, why can't he call the play? It was a stupid uh, I don't play know that it. Failure. I don't know that it didn't. I think of all the people, of all the the people we think about, him and uh, Trump and whoever else, and and Donald Jr. and Rudy. I suspect Bannon was the least surprised by what happened at the Capitol. I'll bet he had envisioned it, and I'll bet he didn't mind it. He is. He wants a revolution. Do, he do wants you think, a revolution. He's do you on think, record. The, you know, Trump made a phone call to the war room at the Willard and the committee where he was, trying, where, trying, where, Bannon right, where Bannon was, and tr- the committee rightly is trying to find out what Trump said on that call. Uh, I would be surprised if Trump did anything that condoned violence. But uh, I do want to know. And I w- also want to know, did he say something like, well, tell them they don't have to they don't have to be that civil about it. You know, something like that, when he, like when he said the police don't have to treat you too nice when they load you into the squad car, right? Sometimes they bump your head against the ceiling. Um, uh, that sort of thing is sort of what Trump would do. But there is also evidence that he was completely fixated on Mike Pence. And, you know, so it, it, it could be exculpatory. I just want to know. That was their hope, certainly up until January 5th. Uh, it, the um, One other thing about Bannon and his, and his podcast was he was, you know, I remember he was uh, doing the podcast from the mall, I think, on January 6th in the morning. And of course, a lot of people there are listening in, no doubt, to the live version. And uh, I've mentioned this before, but he got together with a couple of people that may have done an actual prayer, but they were uh, they were talking and, and one of them said, uh, the darkness and the light. And, and And I think it was him that seized on it and said, yeah, the darkness and the light, that's so important. I didn't realize it at the time, but that's code that's for, Q. for Q, right. And, and the Q people, I mean, not only is it code for Q, 
it means this is the day of the apocalypse. Remember, the woman right. who was shot and killed in the Capitol right. was a QAnoner. She's exactly the kind of person who would get revved up into almost literal frenzy by that kind of thing on Bannon's podcast, and he knew it. And he knew. I it. think. I think at some point they talked Trump. In, in, they inserted Q-like phrases into Trump's comments too. And one of the questions I, I want answered, which I'll never find out, is did did Trump know? It, even it, even if Trump knew that there might be violence, did he know what the Q people were expecting, which is the rapture, not just violence? And uh, I don't think he did know that. But maybe he did. But uh, but I'll tell you, if you're expecting the rapture, it doesn't bother you that you might get shot when you're crashing through a Capitol window. You know, I mean, it, it, right. it's, but, this is intense stuff. And, and there is, knew what he was doing. But there is also uh, Mark Hemingway's point that uh, that, uh, you know, making a huge deal of January 6th, as opposed to dismissing it as a bunch of stupidity that was doomed to failure and sort of a pathetic attempt to overturn an election that that you lost. And it was like ridiculous, which is what it was, uh, only reinforces support for it uh, among the uh, deplorables. It'd be much better just to just to say you people were a bunch of fools and prosecute the ones that are guilty of whatever they're guilty of and find out what Trump did. But, but making it a big, like, you know, as usual, the left sort of in, in the process of making a big deal of its causes, it's counterproductive. I think. Uh, I think Hemingway was Well, right I certainly, that. I don't frame it the way many in the resistance do, which is like, it was the, 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 the storming of the Capitol per se was, the biggest crime, the biggest crime was Trump trying to subvert the democratic process and the Constitution by getting uh, Pence to do something that he had no basis in the Constitution to do. Uh, that was the worst thing. But, I'm, you know, January 6th was a manifestation of uh, how, uh, you know, in effect, subversive Trump had been since the election. I don't know what the word is, but he had been comp you know, he had been undermining democracy and democratic norms since yeah. certainly before the election, but especially since election. No, he night. went he went he went a whole lot crazier after the election. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I the, the worst thing I think he did was trying to get the states to withdraw their electors. I mean, I, I guess I I'm mean, saying, look, Pence's, Pence's role is is vague in the Constitution. You can't really, you know, you can't really condemn him for having a, a, a crazy view of this vague, un, you know, un, unspe unspecific uh, command in the Constitution that Pence counts the votes. Uh, it's like it's like the, the, you know, it's like the command in the Constitution that the states set the manner of choosing electors. Well, some people are going to say that the states can then submit yeah, whatever but, electors they I mean, want. You know, but come on, you can't no say that that's insane, given all the Liberals yes, have done to the Constitution in in the course of the century. You, you, I, I, we shouldn't turn this into a big argument, and I'm not a constitutional lawyer, but it seems we're here pretty to have crazy. A big argument. But it seems pretty crazy to me. Yeah, but we got a lot to get through. We're, we're almost at an hour, Mickey, and we've okay, got a okay, whole okay, paragraph okay. to do. Okay. Um, well, we but have, but I would we say it does seem to to, it does seem to me crazy to say, uh, well, counting the votes, what they meant. You know, and when they said counting the votes was you can actually decide which votes you count and some of them you can just throw in the trash can. That that wouldn't make any sense. Uh, uh, we have uh, best idea of the year and worst idea of the year. Um, OK, uh, I'll do worst quick because quickly because I don't have to elaborate since anybody who's listened to us before knows. I mean, the, the whole Biden's, you know, democracies of the world unite. Worst fucking idea in the history of the world. If yeah. people, you know, need elaboration, comb through our archives. Go ahead. Um, uh, the best idea is, uh, uh, we've already talked about, which is the offer that Manchin made to Biden. So I'll go to my, uh, number, <laughs> my number two best idea. The number three best idea is the idea that Bill Cosby should do a podcast. That's a very good idea. The, the number two oh, idea God, is- Oh, God, that's a horrible idea. That's the worst. That's the worst idea of the. I am taking back what <laughs> okay, I said about democracies idea. unite. Democracies <laughs> unite is not the worst idea. The worst idea <laughs> is giving Bill Cosby a podcast. Do you realize how much older than us he is? Leave aside everything else. He is not in good form, Mickey. Uh, oh, we're we not even in good form, and we he's are. Had a, he's had a long time to think of material. Um, 
Uh, I, I, uh, but Matt Brunig, who's a man of the left and a, an advocate of the guaranteed income, sort of ridiculed me for thinking that there was a culture of poverty that welfare induces. And he said, look at the Social Security, people who qualify for Social Security. To qualify for Social Security, you need so many quarters of work over your life. Uh, as you get older, the, the, that number goes up. But uh, and, and the problem is his statistics were incomplete. But I think his idea is a very good idea to find, look at how the how many people qualify for Social Security, especially men, has changed over the years. It's a sort of a good, a very good rough indicator of whether there's a culture of work in society. And I suspect it'll go up and down uh, if you do it fairly. For women, obviously, it'll go up, 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 up because women entered the workforce. But um, for men, I, I bet there are periods where it goes down. And do those periods correlate? with welfare or not, uh, I think that's a very fruitful area of scholarly inquiry by people who know more about the numbers than I do. That's the best idea of the year? That's all I got. Okay. Well, I, mean, uh, I got to say, I didn't, I, I didn't come up with anything stellar in this uh, category either, with all due respect for your, uh, the nominee you just put forth. Um, mine, a good idea would be, this brings us back to COVID, Release the more fine-grained PCR test numbers. As you know, I don't want to, I don't even know the details, but you know, the question, there's a critical question. I, I mean, look, a lot of people are in a situation my daughter's in. She tested positive PCR. She tested negative rapid test. What does that mean? I think the smart money was, would say, just given that, she probably doesn't have a problem. She probably doesn't need to spend 10 days in seclusion during the holidays. Uh, but she she did, and ten days later, it looks like the smart money was right. the The PCR, you know, the the question with the PCR test is how many cycles of amplification right. does it take before they get a positive reading? They should at least tell the doctors that. I mean, the doctor who administered the test himself did not have that information. He couldn't give her guidance. Okay, is it true? What that the we, hell we, is that? Is it true that with enough cycles, you will always find a molecule? Of the virus in everybody? I don't think it's that bad, but I think it, 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 if you have somebody who just had passing interaction with someone and it, and there was never a threat of them getting infected and there's no threat of them infecting anyone, uh, then you can still get a positive yeah. if you do enough cycles. And, and I heard yeah. about this, uh, you know, there's this, you know, this, the weekend uh, virology with, uh, had has this guy on Daniel Griffin who gives a weekly clinical update, and he said the same thing. He he get, he, he described a case exactly analogous to my daughter's. He said, "I don't think she's contagious, and I think it's yeah. a shame she's yeah. missing out on there, holidays with her family." There worse, there there are bigger problems, which is the CDC's data apparently is so bad and disorganized. They can't tell you. They don't segregate by vaccinated and unvaccinated, so they can't tell you what the death rate is for vaccinated. Versus unvaccinated people, and it, 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 they're, they're, uh, it's, I'll tell you the the, the whole thing has mess. been a shit show. The whole thing has been a shit show in America. I mean, you know what it reminds me of? I have been, I can elaborate maybe in the parrot room, but I, I've been. I listened to this book on the war in the Pacific, the first couple of years of world in World War Two, and it was a shit and, show. And, well, it, what's funny is Japan was so much better. It's like. Finally, after you'd listened to like a, 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 f a few battles unfold, then whenever like you would hear like some bombers are coming at a Japanese, uh, some Japanese bombers are coming at American carrier, you'd go, oh shit, that carrier's toast. They're, they're fucking good. And whenever you heard American bombers are heading toward a Japanese carrier, you'd be like, oh, those guys should like just, you know, get some sun on the deck. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. Nothing bad will happen to you if you're on an aircraft carrier that Americans are trying to bomb. It, the discrepancy was almost that stark. But through just sheer uh, kind of relentless magnitude, right, we right. kind of yeah. overcame them. And, and, and it's, it's like that with COVID. It's like, OK, we're getting through it. But it could have been so much better. We are so bad at this kind of shit. And I didn't realize we were so bad. Um, the, the statistics, everything. There's so little rationality in the policy making. Um, are we? Are we? Are we on to? Uh, I have some other worst ideas of the year. Uh, okay. Biden. Biden thinking he's the new FDR. Terrible idea. I don't know. 
how we got uh, how we bought into that. Uh, probably the worst idea of the year was uh, putting all that money into the American Rescue Plan that Lawrence Summers said would uh, trigger inflation, and he seems to have been right. You know, it sent I think thirty thirty billion dollars to California that it didn't need. Uh, it sent a whole bunch of money to the states at Democratic insistence that they didn't need. All it did was produce inflation. So that was like a huge fuck up in retrospect by the Biden administration and the Democrats that is causing them uh, unending heartache at the moment because everybody's worried about inflation. Um, and uh, the um, I thought I thought the Chicago DA saying that she wasn't going to prosecute murders when they when they uh, consisted of mutual combat by gang members. That was a pretty bad idea. Uh, I I don't like that vibe. I mean, you don't it's like, kind of like we can have gun smoke in the street every day. We can have a shoot down shootout, and the police are not going to do anything about it. Well, there's that. It's there's the also like there's also a subtext of uh, you know, it's just these black drug dealers. Don't worry. You know, there's also right, kind of an arguably racist. Uh, yeah, I'm sure she is black, but is that what you're going to say? But <laughs> she's the uh, woman who let Jesse Smollett off the hook. Yeah. So, well, that was completely indefensible too. So, uh, in a, she's uh, in a different way, pretty immune from charges of racism. Though I agree, it does play on those sentiments. It 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 it, it plays on the let those drug dealers get shot. Of course, he didn't get off the hook in the long run, but um, correct. Not no thanks to her. Um, do you have more worst ideas? Uh, uh, Kyle Rittenhouse should shut up and just go live a quiet life somewhere. That's a bad idea or a good idea? Oh. No, the bad idea is him not doing that. <laughs> uh, and I think the guy who told Biden, let's go, Brandon, now considering a role, a run for Congress or run for an elected office using his newfound fame. I think that's probably a bad idea. Is he what is he? I haven't. Is he running as a Republican? Oh, yeah. Because he claims well, that, he claims he, he claims he didn't mean it or something. I don't know. I I have all this. Let's go, Brandon, wrapping paper lying around that I can't use because Josh Barrow mocked people who use it fairly convincingly. So, um, Well, I mean, it says what it I says. Could, if you're not ashamed to be, you know, basically pro-Trump, which you have tended not to be. It's a joke. No, the people that on the Trump, people on the anti-Trump side don't get that it's a joke. They think you are literally saying, fuck Joe Biden. No, yeah, you're making fun of the media for Suppressing oh, a crowd Mickey, that said "fuck it, Joe Biden." Mickey, in a country this polarized, there's some places where irony is does correct. Just that doesn't is work. that is correct. That's the problem. Yeah. But I but um, uh, people should have uh, a sense of humor. I'm afraid you've come to the wrong place for that. If you're looking um, for that, for anyway. Me. That so those are those are my worst ideas. Worst ideas. What about, did you do a best idea? What was your best? Oh, yeah, you did. So what yeah. about biggest surprise? Biggest surprise. Uh, I thought the, uh, Biden's, the disappearance of the old Joe Biden and the uh, his failure to, to correct for like things like the chaos at the border and, you know, swerving. I expect them to swerve back to the right. It, way, way more than he did. He did it for a little bit and he's already given up on it. It's like he 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 restored the Remain in Mexico program and there are like 203 people in it instead of the thousands that were in it under Trump. Uh, it's been a pathetic swerve. And uh, that's why one wants to know what's going on in the damn White House to, to find out, uh, did he really mean it? Is he ineffectual? Is somebody blocking him? Did he have a change of heart? Could he, can he, can be, he be reheartened? Is he a... You know, is he getting bad political advice? But uh, his his failure to do any Clintonite correction uh, back toward the center mm -hmm. is uh, is a huge surprise. Yeah, I'll get to something related under another category. Uh, my biggest surprise, I mean, it was a surprise, I think, was just the idea of endless pandemic. I, I think a year ago, people still thought, well, this will come and it'll go. And and. Uh, there had been new variants, but I don't think we'd really taken to heart the possibility that this is going to become like the flu, but maybe worse. And uh, it's looking like it may. Um, um, so you got you just got to get your vaccines and trust your T cells, folks. Uh, the um, um, because uh, I did my prediction. Do you have a prediction? 
I had a whole bunch of predictions. The Chi- the Olympics in China are going to be a disaster. For Pretty who? Clear. For China? Yeah, I mean, for everybody. It's, it's going to bad. It's going to be a lousy Olympics. It's just going to piss off China and inflame world tensions. What's going to piss off China? Well, the boycotts, A. Eh, uh, nobody, the, none of the athletes are boycotting, are they? Not that I know of, but, you know, but the, every, every, every day there's somebody else who boycotts, uh, even if they're unimportant. And China will be pissed off at all of them. And, and people pointing out that the Olympics were chaos is going to be another one. And people pointing out the folly of the no COVID policy, zero COVID policy that China is pursuing is going to be another one. Uh, so I just think it's a disaster. Um, the um, uh, I think the Dems will do better in the midterms than people think. Oh, oh so wait, as, but uh, no, just that's as too they big. Did, just as they did better, just as they did better in redistricting than people think. You got to get quantitative. In, that, Suvay, no, I think they'll number. lose the majority in the House and probably lose it in the Senate, but it won't be the, like the 70 seat a majority wipeout that Republicans are predicting because Republicans are acting so crazy that I think they're going to turn off a lot of people. So Democrats will have um, at least how many seats in the Senate after the election? Oh, God, I, the, I, I predict. What do I know? I would predict the Republicans will have a one or two vote majority in the Senate. And what about and the House? Beats the hell out of me. Uh, 15, 20, something like that. Okay, you're on record. Um, not, the ti- not the tidal wave of rejection that uh, people are expecting. Uh, uh, I, and the long-term prediction is a huge back-to-basics movement where people try to opt out of the metaverse, opt out of uh, you know a lot of the complications of society, uh, Opt out of spying and snooping of, by the government. Opt out of uh, the good things that that technology can bring. Although I don't think anybody will ever give up their laptops, and and and, and not go back to the farm, but go as as close back to the land as as they can. Move to small towns in the Midwest, and there'll be some charismatic leader, and you could be that leader, Bob. And I it would think be known would be as better suited. It'll be that. known as rightism. The rightist movement swept America. I would love for that word to catch on, but I don't think that's what I would want it to apply to. So, wait, you're saying this will there will be a back to the a back to to physical be, community movement ha- halfway between life in California now and the Amish. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, what uh, is that like? You you're Amish, but you you have a much lower standard of living. What? You don't spend a lot. You see your neighbors. You, you don't drive the latest car. You don't have the latest uh, app. Maybe you don't have cell phones. Maybe you just have a, a, a you know, a, br- a burner I, phone or something. I like. find that in many ways very appealing, but I'm afraid it's not going to happen. I mean, there will be a movement, but the, the technology is just so inexorable. Um, I, I, I think there should be more of an effort to head off its bad effects uh, and and maybe even in some sense it's it's slow down its rate of uh advance but i i don't think it's just not going to you'll see communities like that i i mean actually it's interesting i mean i do think the effects of headlong technological progress are going to be so extreme that you will see more in the way of relatively speaking radical movements of the kind you're describing like just screw technology or we're going to a town and we're all going to agree to limit technology in various ways. That's an interesting scenario. I just think in the end, you can't stop it. And people who do that are ultimately surrendering influence and they will just be marginalizing themselves. I sympathize. I, I may want to join them for a weekend or possibly a, a year, but uh, I don't see a future in that. I wish I did. I don't, I, you know. I'm as unhappy as well, anybody else, as you know. Are you doing more chattering teeth? What's that sound? I was I was groping to try to find my Nancy Pelosi doll, which I found, yeah. uh, because I I think Pelosi will not quit this year. She'll stay on. That's another prediction. Oh man! Because uh, somebody uh, the, apparently she's unsatisfied with Hakeem Jeffries' performance this year, and doesn't is he isn't the, quite is he ready the heir apparent? He's an heir apparent, or the wise and steady Hoyer, the heir apparent. I don't know, but um, oh God, but uh, 
but she's not How ready old is to he? hand over. How old is she's he? not ready like, to hand over the reins. He's really ancient. He's like he's like over eighty, I think. I mean, this this country's 80. a total gerontocracy. Um, I mean, as they get older Biden, and older, the Fauci, idea, Pelosi, Hoyer, it, this is like us, me, you. It's as horrible. they get older it's and a, older, the idea of a gerontocracy has renewed appeal. Uh, so, um, and the more that I see of younger Americans, Bob, the less I'm eager to pass the torch. I love young Americans. See, this is the difference between you and me. I love young Americans. We, yeah. Um, uh, you know the other difference, Mickey? Between you and me? Uh, I suspect there's several. Go ahead. I'm better dressed. <laughs> That's not what I had in mind. We'll save it for the parrot room. Um, uh, uh, and I predict Paul Krugerman will not apologize to Mike Kinsley for ridiculing him when Kinsley said that we were going to have inflation. That's interesting. Well, he won't do that, but uh, but, but we should demand it. But uh, Krugman, did you see Krugman's uh, column where he's starting to reposition him? I mean, he's starting to say, I could be wrong. The evidence he, has been worse than I thought. He, he's, he's I saw giving, that. Yeah. He's always, he's been saying for a while, I could be wrong. I mean, he's, he has a newfound humility, but the savagery with with him and his hench and his hench person Brad DeLong attacked Mike for essentially turning out to be right. Uh, uh, belied his new humility. Let's put it that well, way. Well, I think it's still early days. I I I don't think all yeah, the, the verdicts but, totally in. Um, but um, and the the pro the problem with your 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 grand solution to the budget of taxing the rich is that. Uh, that only works if you if all these programs sunset when they're supposed to sunset. And obviously the Democrats don't want them to sunset. So if you continue them, you need to raise taxes a whole lot more to balance the budget. Which I'm sure you'd be happy to do. Is there any subject that you don't think of as a backdoor to discussing Build Back Better, Mickey? I thought I, I felt I had this wonderful feeling of calm thinking we were through <laughs> that discussion. <laughs> And even when you brought up Krugman, I did not suspect, this is how naive I am, I did not suspect they, that this was a, a, a trap door that would lead me back to Build Back Better. They, they never expect Build Back Better. No, nope, um, that's the advantage you always have. Right, it's asymmetric warfare. So, so I have a bunch of other... Ca what? Categories or predictions? Ca categories, but I thought we were going to save some for the parent room. We could do that. I mean, we've been doing this for a while. So yeah, maybe we should do that. Uh, Let's get, yeah, mercenary. Because, um, yeah, we've been doing over an hour, and the parrot room is going to last easily an hour and a half, possibly more. Um, um, and, and we're not the young guys we used to be, and we don't yeah. want to just keel over in the middle of the parrot room, yeah. you know? We have, uh, Although. Co concepts we want to lose, concepts that are good we want to keep. Uh, we have... Uh, Words least, that need to be stopped. Words well, and the word, concepts. I'm, I'm, I'm conflating words and concepts, yes. That um, need to be stopped. Biggest under news, best good news. And we'll, we'll uh, even explain what under news is in the parrot room. And and, and I am going to talk more about Biden's uh, cognitive status under that. Uh, yeah, you had all sorts of points you wanted to make out of Biden that you were... Uh, I can. I, it can wait. Uh, okay. I mean, let's see what else we have. So, under moves. Oh, least deserving media attention getter. Yeah, that that's actually all I have uh, left to award. But, well, um, yeah, there's also cruising for a bruising or ready for a big critical piece, which is a near cousin of least deserving media attention. And getter. It, it has to be somebody other than David Remnick, who's been the perennial favorite in that category for a decade. Uh, he's not the one I had in mind. That's an issue. I would kind of debate you about that. Uh, Remnick I, is uh, unassailable. Nobody wants to attack it because they all want to write for him. And he's he's very good. But you could write a, a nice critical piece of, about him. Well, you could write a nice critical piece in The New Yorker. Yeah, and The New Yorker under him. But it, but it's not... Well, that you would can't, be, you that can't would be depict piece. him as being as pernicious as the person I had in mind. Whom we He's not pernicious. It, 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 you, you don't have to be pernicious to have a hit job. They have yeah, a, no, oh, look. A nasty you, profile you, written You can do you. a good hit job about almost any magazine in any what, magazine. Two I mean, cheers thing, for David Remnick. What's wrong with David Remnick? David Remnick's tragic flaw. <laughs> you know, there are all sorts of ways to put it. I, I also The want dark to side the of room, David Remnick. I also want to discuss in the parrot room, like, are 
is there a shortage of good hit pieces in coming from, you know, reasonably sized platforms, right? Like in our day, the New Republic was at once a prominent, more prominent and influential than the New Republic today or any comparable thing. And it was a source of excellent hit pieces, right? And now, and kind well, of now they just do hit one, pieces. They used to do one interview with Isaac Chotner and they're dead. And also what happened to Isaac? What happened to Isaac? When was the last time he pulled a Mike Wallace? Is Isaac yeah, okay? Isaac. We should check him. We should check in on him. Isaac. Isaac, where know. are you? Do you know Isaac was Got the already. first person, maybe the second person, to work for blogging heads? I don't know. He took an instant dislike to me, that's for sure. Huh. We could discuss people who have done that. that in the parrot Imagine room. That. But oh no, the parrot room is only an hour and a half. Oh, let's not. Um, um anyway, so, that's and we have other things to talk about. So like all the other topics we did we didn't get to in this one. Yeah. Like, should we bring back Gorbachev? Is he alive? He's alive. He gave he gave a, a reasonable speech saying that America got arrogant after winning the Cold War and that was a mistake. He was right about that. We're going to talk um, about our worst opinions. Uh, and we, I had we have, a bad opinion. I had a bad prediction. Okay. That all oh, worst opinion. Okay. And we had uh, we have we have Jelaine Maxwell. Oh, Galane. Uh, Galane. Yeah. So Galane. She. She. Sorry. She. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. I learned that my pronunciation is a little off in the course of this most recent coverage. The, it's and like she had a bad week. It's like pronouncing Raihan Salon. Nobody really knows how to pronounce her name. Um, even her even her family doesn't know how to pronounce her name. But Raihan is at least either Raihan or Rayhan. No, actually. I think it's Raihan. I, I'm joking Rayhan. about Raihan, but uh, yeah. if you he he occasionally pronounced it himself. So okay, um, so she. Wait a second. Is there there are other quickly in the parrot room? I also want to. Oh damn it! Um. There's oh, Mike I want to talk. I want to talk a bit, little about Edward O. Wilson, who died. Who might? Oh yeah, I wanted to hear your what you yeah, said. Yeah, yeah, and I wrote yeah. about pretty extensively decades ago. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't think his legacy was actually very. It certainly wasn't perfectly captured in any of the big O bits. Oh, but I want to. You talk about bad predictions. In my, in my, uh, in 1988, in a book of mine that included a very long profile of his about him. I, I had a prediction about his obituary, which, which was not vindicated when? by the actual obituaries. He would die a little noticed obscure scholar. <laughs> no. It, it was a good, it was a very effective paragraph of mine, even if it turned out not to be right. Uh the uh could talk I, I've started watching the expanse, which I think you've been watching. Could talk about that a little. Um Okay. Uh, uh commenters uh have raised such questions, uh, co uh, pair room commenters, as why I don't cut my hair and why you don't take LSD. And we, I want to continue to press you to take Are LSD. You? And I think you'll continue to press me to cut my hair. Maybe it'll be a deal. You know, it's like okay. you drop acid and watch me hair. cut my hair. What? You can talk about your hair. <laughs> okay. So, well, um, um and Galen. It's not and, as bad and, as Matt Lewis's hair. I'll give you that. Uh, Matt's hair is fine. It reminds me of mine. Um, so uh, talk a little more about Pacific Crucible, this book about the war in the Pacific, and whatever else comes up. Meanwhile, uh, I think uh, we uh, are signing off here. Boo and Parrot Room. No, wait. Patreon.com slash Parrot Room is where you find. I, I had some other, some other topics, but yes. That you um, want to talk about in the parrot room? Yeah, ways to get off what I call the Michael Young pathway, which is the sort of grinding uh, deployment of meritocracy that Michael Young foresaw that is basically the future that nobody wants to go to. Uh, and uh, there are ways to get off it. Oh, good. And probably a whole lot that, I, that we haven't thought of, but there are a couple of examples. Um, and... Uh, I saw the movie Children of Men, which was a mistake. I could talk about that. Have you seen Don't Look Up? No, do I have to? It seemed like a 
overly broad parody. I was going to ask you if I had to, because overly broad is the criticism I heard, and I a, hate a, broad. A, a, apparently, it's, uh, apparently, the discussion of it is very polarized, but not on conventional left-right lines. So. I saw an interesting documentary called Ascension that I, that I, will, that I will mention in the parrot room yeah. um, about China. And, it, and if worse comes to worse, I will give you the full, uh, the full nine reasons why Ron Brownstein's coalition of the Ascendant is the worst idea of the decade. I only gave you four last week. Seven will do, but it's up to you. Okay. Um, uh, anyway, okay. pretty exciting. That's all I can say. No, I agree. I agree. Uh, and you are looking marvelous. If people who are listening on the podcast should really check out your tuxedo and my maroon necktie. And now um, on to uh, the parrot room. On to the parrot room. Hang on. The parrot room. Exactly. Yeah.